This week's video has been inspired by um, a programme on the BBC this week on Radio 4 called A Life Scientific and it featured Francesca Happe. It was shown on the 1st of September if you want to catch it and she was talking about her work with those with autism. So the reason I sort of um, tuned in as it were is that I hear the words autism and my ears prick up and I'm automatically listening and I came in part way through originally when she was talking about girls with autism so I have since listened to the whole program and strongly recommend it. Um, so autism, basically there are three aspects of autism, three, three characteristics that um, imply that somebody might have autism. One is um, a, a lack of um, social skills um, one is to do with communication skills and another is to do with this intense um, eye for detail. So focusing in, focusing in on something, noticing things, these are, these are characteristics. So attached to this whole idea has been this thing called theory of mind. So theory of mind is how, um, some people say it's a bit like mind reading but it isn't that. It is the fact that we can look at someone's actions and predict the sort of thing they might be thinking about, what's going on in their mind for them to behave that way. So if somebody's rifling through a handbag, we might be thinking, oh, have they, are they looking for something? Have they lost something? For somebody with autism, they wouldn't necessarily see the association between the action and what somebody might be thinking. Um, they might need to learn that when somebody's crying, they're upset. It's not that they can't feel these things, but they have to learn the social cues that help us to understand. The, these are things that people without autism, autism just develop as they grow, that these are just parts of who we are. But for somebody with autism these are things that they find particularly difficult. Um, and she does speak about that in, in, in the programme. So the diagnostics for autism can sometimes miss things in girls. This is, I'm sp talking specifically about girls with autism, because they sometimes mask things, or an aspect of it, such as the, um, the, the focusing in on something, could be easily mis uh, misunderstood and not noticed. It could be missed very easily. So there's another, I'll come back to that, there's another aspect which I meant to mention which is that alongside autism there's now an understanding that there are often sensory issues which could be hypo or hyper. So hypo where you are under receptive, hypo, hyper where you are over receptive. So for example if you are hyposensitive to maybe temperature you may go out, a child might, or an adult might go out in extreme cold wearing just a t-shirt and shorts because they don't really notice the cold. If you're hypersensitive, it could be that a slightest change in temperature and that bothers you. It could be the, the, the irritation of um, maybe a label in a bit of clothing. Um, a lot of people have that irritation, I do, um, and as far as I know I'm not autistic, but um, that could be a hyper sensitive, very much so. And people like Born Anxious, I've mentioned before, who have these clothes without labels, they address that, that sort of issue. It could be to do with the lighting in a room, that a light's flickering slightly. Not, not a lot, not noticeable to most people, but for somebody who's hypersensitive, they would notice it. A slight buzzing of the light could be something. Um, the attention to detail, one of the other characteristics I was talking about. I had a child once who I had this interactive whiteboard presentation and there were individual words or letters were on different lines um, and as far as I could see they were in a straight line and one of these children in my class just missed it he, he wasn't really focused for the whole lesson he was staring at the board but not joining in so I asked him at the end what's up and he said to me that line is, is one pixel out and I looked and it was one, one pixel out and that had been his whole focus for the whole lesson and he was, I mean, he was diagnosed autistic, we knew he was autistic, and I learned to check that my lines are on the same, exactly the same pixel when I, when I do a presentation, and I, I wouldn't do it otherwise now. Um, so these are things that are common characteristics, male and female. Um, Rosie, who I've talked about, I talked about her the other week, her, one of her fixations was very much the reading she was doing and it was this fantasy series about cats and it's 
sparked her interest in both reading, writing and drawing and you saw in that beautiful picture how her attention for detail, there was something like 30 something layers in that picture that she did on the computer. Well you'd need to have that intense eye for detail to be able to do that because it's really really focused in um, and these are the positives that can so easily be overlooked. People talk about autism in negative terms but actually to have that focus is phenomenal. You know, um, people who can, who are prepared to spend maybe eight hours just practicing the same magic trick again and again and again may well be autistic. Not, I'm not saying all magicians are autistic, but I'm saying that sort of level of focus can have a real benefit. A musician may just play that one little bit over and over again till they've got it perfect. And if you're autistic, that would be a part of what you would do as part of your makeup. So. You know, this is where you get, um, you also can have these phenomenal memories. I'm not saying all autistic people, each autistic person is an individual. They will all have aspects of, and some things will be stronger, some things won't be as pronounced. But, um, you know, you get savants who focus in on detail until they become, their memory for detail on something in particular can be incredible. By the same token, you also have people with autism who are totally non-verbal. So there is a whole spectrum. It is an autistic spectrum. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, with the diagnoses, so I'm talking about girls again. Girls can be missed very easily. So think back to the, the third thing I mentioned, which was this eye for detail. So if you've got a girl whose focused area is something like horses or boy bands, fashion. Those areas are not going to immediately strike you as, oh, that's a bit odd. That girl seems to be talking a lot about horses. A lot of people talk about horses. The boy focuses can often be ones easier to pick up. You know, you get a teenage boy who's focused in on Thomas the Tank Engine, that's a bit of a giveaway. Um, the fascination with, um, you quite often get a fascination with space, black holes, things like this. So these things can draw you in, help you to understand. Whereas if the obsession and the focus and the eye for detail is, is focusing on something which a lot of people their age are focusing in on, it may be harder to, to spot. However, if you delve deeper, if you ask the right questions, if you find out what is it about that particular interest that fascinates them? How many facts can they just regurgitate? How much have they remembered about it? There may well be cues and clues in what they're discussing if you take it that bit further and don't just dismiss it as, oh yes, she's a girl and she's interested in horses, so, so many. Or she's interested in boy bands, so, so many. If you dismiss it, you're going to miss these important things. So it's really important to when we hear people talk we need to really listen really hear what they're saying so that's part of the the diagnosis issue the the special interests um you've also got the fact that you quite often have um what was i trying to say yes you quite often have no filter so for example somebody who you know maybe as an adult and you think they always seem to stand that little bit too close and they'll say things and you just think whoa too much information that could well be a sign um quite often that because of this difficulty with social interaction and theory of mind you can find somebody i certainly know some adults where they'll stand really close or they will they'll be telling you things about themselves and you just think whoa actually that's a little bit personal or they'll ask questions or they'll state things and you think that's slightly awkward it's not quite how we would do things and so these can be signs that can again easily be missed because what happens is a lot of girls mask it boys can too i'm not saying it's exclusively a girl boy thing but we are finding more girls mask things so they get missed we don't see them so we have to listen to the parents that's so important I had a parent who told me that she thought her daughter she was she was telling me all the problems she was having with her child at home 
and there was just something about it that made me wonder and I got out one of my Kathy Hoopman books um, it was All Cats Have Asperger's and I got the other one Inside Asperger's Looking Out and I just went through some of the pages and she was like oh my gosh that's her that's her that's her now at school none of this was presenting itself she was very quiet at school she seemed to be socially happy and we couldn't work out there was this mismatch and this is where the masking comes in so a girl might see somebody who's socially included and accept, you know sort of like one of the, the maybe social leaders or something and they'll look at them and they will this eye for detail comes in they will think okay they're the sort of clothes to wear that's how you wear your clothes it's not just about the the type of skirt it might be that you you wear your school skirt a little bit higher you sort of turn it around turn it tuck it up a bit um, they will look at the mannerisms they'll look at the sorts of people they hang out with they'll listen to the jokes and they will repeat the jokes they will be very much finding out what it is that makes that person popular not necessarily understanding why that makes them popular but thinking if I mimic that behavior then I will get that po popularity I'll be socially accepted I won't get bullied so you you get a lot of this mimicking and masking when they're stressed out they don't show it they bottle it up they go home and it all comes out absolute exhaustion and you get the meltdowns whereas they've kept that hidden at school they've masked it they've copied they've seen how to fit in now that creates another problem when we come to puberty we come to puberty and things start to change you know girls who have been talking about one type of thing will suddenly start talking about they'll show an interest maybe in boys and maybe they weren't that interested in fashion before but suddenly they are well this poor girl who's autistic and spent years getting it right working out oh yes if I do that if I do that that eye for detail has really helped me cope blah 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 suddenly she does those same things and it's not working she gets laughed at she gets teased oh yeah you're really interested in that Pfft, we've moved on you know she's got to learn it all over again you're going to get more meltdowns at home and possibly bullying at school so she's going to quickly try to learn again to remask it but there's going to be a transition point where she hasn't noticed that you know things were changing she she hasn't worked out why what's worked before is suddenly not working so we need to look out for our girls especially at puberty another thing that can mask it is something called comorbidity so you get you've got something and you've got something else so you might have ADHD as well as autism so if the focus is all on the ADHD they could miss the autism and vice versa obviously but you know you get somebody with a dietary problem the focus is on oh it's obviously about body image it may not be it might be about a number it might be about something totally different so things can be masked another thing that um, is mentioned in the program that's really important that can be masked is post-traumatic stress so that's usually associated with a life-threatening situation however for somebody on the spectrum it could be something far less it could be as simple as catching a bus and something going wrong with the bus journey it could be that um, I know of a situation where somebody got on a bus and they were coming back from wherever and a drunk got on the bus and they were causing a lot of trouble and eventually the bus had to pull over they had to wait they had to get the police well this person was then late home they then got the usual sort of wow and you hear you know that slightly angry um, that relief that, that comes out as anger when 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 your child comes home late he's like oh what's wrong suddenly that person doesn't want to take that bus anymore and won't go to that place by bus because they associate the bus with the very very stressful situation that they found they couldn't cope with and their heart was racing and all these other signs of stress were happening they don't want that bus anymore well that can in an extreme case become they see the cut they see the bus stop and they come out in a panic attack or it could even be they see the um, the colour that the bus was if it was a red London bus they see a red they see they see red and they associate it with that negative journey and these symptoms of which are traumatic can be overlooked and not understood so one of the reasons I do these videos is I think we need to raise understanding we need to raise understanding in places like schools but also for the elderly in places like old people's homes in hospitals you know we talk about the sensory issues a hospital is a noisy 
bright environment and that could be causing so much stress. Now if it's a child hopefully the parent knows what causes the stress and can discuss this but for a lot of people they don't have the, the person as an advocate for them. Schools are noisy, they're bustly, they have bright lights, the lights quite often are just on the turn, they're flickering, all sorts of things are happening. We need understanding. Children with autism are going to be bullied if they're not understood. So we as teachers, as well as finding strategies for the person with autism, we have a duty to actually help other people to understand autism. Our teachers, so that they aren't putting down this blank expression to defiant behaviour. Um, they've got to, we've got to explain to the children so that they appreciate and understand the people within their community. We are all going to meet people with autism. It's our responsibility to have an understanding so that it's not about tolerating, I don't like the word tolerate, it's about involving, including, having somebody really a part of your community, not ostracised, not put up with. There's nothing putting up with about it. We need to fully include these people in our society because we all have a right, we all have the same rights in society, or at least we should, and we have the responsibility to really support everybody, to help people to feel fully included, to be accommodating to their needs. You know, there's a brilliant picture in one of Kathy Hoopman's books where she shows a dog covered and covered and covered in clothes pegs and that would be so irritable can you imagine how awful it would be if you were just totally covered 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 that's how it can feel when it's going wrong we have a duty to make sure it doesn't feel like that to do what we can to help people feel included and to remember that girls have autism too thank you